What's going on guys? Fizz here once again. Um, first and foremost, I just finished a 12 hour stream. So uh, I'm pretty exhausted. It's 4 a.m. So if I if I like get lost a little bit in my words, uh, forgive me. Uh, I'm just really tired, but I'm gonna record this video now and then I'm gonna publish it tomorrow before I go live for stream because I think that's a good schedule. So first and foremost, uh, what is this new character that I was talking about? Uh, this is a Flame Blast Elementalist um, that also utilizes a staff, as you might notice, um, with Fire Burst uh, to help supplement clear, which, as I'm sure you know, is a definite uh, pain point for Flame Blast. So I will just clear a map real quick. Uh, I'll let that do most of the talking for the build. Uh, this is something I've been theory crafting for a few days. Uh, it seems pretty, pretty legit. Um, yeah. I'm gonna save a lot of the explanation and stuff for um, after after the map. So I'm just gonna run through the map real quick. You guys can see like what it's like, and then uh, and then we'll do the breakdown. Okay. Some skirt injection. Uh, tier 7 it's told by the way I'm ready, uh, just leveled this character up earlier level 79 right now that's the map boss he's gone <laughs> flame blast is crazy so is flame surge flame surge helps a lot oh is that boss oh hey boss Mana. Oh shit, what up, mana flash charges. Oh, fire burst will end it. Fog, kill the boss. Oh, it's gonna be a little bit awkward. I already used my ball flame blast. Two fusings, three chromes, very cool. Definitely not checking the Kringles. <clears throat> All right, that's the map. Obviously I'm still quite low level because I got like 40% of my level from that map, but uh, yeah, so what was the Kringle on this? Yo, added fizz damage. Sick. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, physics wrist rehab build. So I've been kind of like theory crafting this for a bit. I wanted to try, I said it a lot on stream um, and in a few other videos. I really wanted to try flame blast. Really want to try fire burst after some of the changes. Uh, I got buffed back up a little bit and then, you know, there's ignite changes. Uh, all sorts of stuff so basically um this character should be like on paper is actually incredibly strong um you know obviously like no one's playing this shit so this was just kind of something i had to like theory craft up and make work uh, especially in like a hardcore ssf environment um unlimited budget uh ignite nowadays uh definitely struggles in the damage department but things seem to be uh pretty pretty good so far um first and foremost uh i guess we'll go over the passive tree um starting off scaled scaling tons of cast speed this is simply for flame blast um so as is right now uh takes me what about like a second and a half to hit 10 stages um when I'm ready, ideally i get that lower uh one of the key components I'll get into later is actually frenzy charges, but I'll cover that when I get the gear part. 
Um, so basically just lots of cast speed. That's also why I have Firewalker, by the way, is just cast speed with fire skills. Um, and then I'm actually going for a lot of block as well because uh, the staff masteries are crazy now. They're actually quite strong. So basically just life, um, fire dot stuff, um, block stuff, block stuff with mana regen. Uh, fire masteries, same stuff you take on every fire build now. Um, fire dot multi and cover enemies in ash when they hit you. Um, running Ellie Overload on this build. I'll go into more of that in a second. Um, pathing down, grabbing explosive impact. The AOE is, it's okay. I mean, it just helps with clear, right? It doesn't increase the, like, uh, area damage doesn't increase ignite damage, um, even for AOE tags. Uh, but it's just, it's fire damage here, and I've, I've, I've POB'd it, right? This, this is worth taking, um, re regardless of the, uh, area of effect. Like, there's a lot of damage in, in three passive points that I have to basically path through anyway. So, um, I will also be picking up Holy Fire, too. Don't worry about that. Don't scream at me in the comment section over it. Um, Purity of Flesh. For the life masteries, uh, just the typical plus 50 max life and 10% increased max life. Running a uh, reservation node here with the uh, reservation uh, mastery as well. Um, going on lower, what I'm pathing for right now is divine judgment. So for the elemental mastery, um, this is going to be a really hard choice. There's obviously 40% increased effect of non-damaging ailments, which makes our shock in like insanely strong. Uh, but I need to like test out how much I'm actually going to be shocking things for before I grab this. Um, because what I'm most likely going to end up taking is the energy shield leech instead. As right now when I show you I'll get into the gear, I have um, fire leech for my life. But since I'm going relatively hybrid-esque, you know, like the current meta, um, I have no energy shield leech. Which makes it a little bit awkward because I just don't have energy shield a lot of the time. Um, so I do want to grab Leech for that, which is why I'm pathing here right now when I don't really need the damage. I just want the mastery. Um, beyond that, uh, Devotion is life into Holy Dominion, Res, damage, um, Discipline Training, life, Retribution, which is really good because it gives more cast speed. Again, cast speed, very important for your Flame Blast, and then also damage, gives some strength and intelligence as well. I will probably end up, well, I'm definitely going to pick up Sanctity. Uh, the armor is really nice, the ES is nice, the regen is nice, all of it's really good. And then I'm probably going to end up picking up Precision as well because uh, between the small node and the notable, um, it's 10% increase cast speed plus 20 dex. Uh, the build is definitely very dex hungry. Um, so it's just uh, two birds with one stone there. Over here, running our first staff um, node cluster. So EO. Um, on this node, basically for free that you just grab because you want block, uh, you get 20% for power charge on block. So, uh, actually like running through even like bossing and stuff, um, you'll have like one to two or three, you know, it's not, it's like variable, right? But you'll have power charges up most of the time, uh, which definitely helps with EO. Um, obviously we don't care about like crit multi or anything cause we're running EO, but it does help with, um, like proccing EO. Um, and I'll get more into the mechanics behind it later on when I go over like this uh, the gems and the skills For the masteries on the staffs uh, the stave the stave stuff. What I'm doing is 2% um, life um, And ES on block very very cool very nice. Uh, this node's pretty good It's a shame that it's not 2% of life and ES on block in general um, I still think it wouldn't be like crazy OP if it was um, but 2% life on attack block and 2% ES on spell block is is pretty solid. Um, the other one I'm running is 30% increased defenses while wielding a staff. So that's just 30% increase to global defenses. That's 30% energy shield and 30% increased armor and 30% increased evasion for one passive point. Very, very strong. So moving on down here, we path through here. Um, actually... I just noticed I could save multiple points, couldn't I? And my original tree I pathed down here for barbarism, but I actually I could just I could put a point right here and save uh save two two passives. Hmm. Okay, well, uh pretend we path here and we go down. Um Tireless, uh mana 
definitely uh, somewhat of an issue on this build. Hi, Clyde. Um, somewhat of an issue on this build. And then going up for the uh, nodes here, this is just uh, block, block, block. Also, 800 armor if you blocked recently is honestly really nice. Uh, ignore the uh, damage stuff. That's just for attacks. It has nothing to deal with the build. And then uh, down here, why did we take combat stamina? Well, it's simply because uh, it's the only armor mastery on this part of the tree. Uh, and we need the determination mana reservation node um, to fit in all of our auras. I have a jewel socket here with a nice little uh, max life, cast speed, and fire dot multi jewel. Very nice jewel. Maybe I'll work up the nads to vol it and hope I get CB immune. We'll see. And then constitution. I will probably end up taking iron will uh, simply because it'll increase my on hit a fair bit. And uh, it's just free damage. The build hits very frequently, even though I'm an ignite build. It, I mean, it's like a for one passive point, getting like a 5% damage increase is like it's fine i have a lot of strength anyway um i have ash frost and storm anointed uh 30 increased effect of non-damaging ailments makes our shock really good which is more damage and then 30 percent increased elemental damage is also very cool all right so that's the passive tree um other places that i'm going to end up pathing arsonist uh very nice like i said i'm going to be grabbing sanctity and precision um past that uh holy fire as well um if you want you could path down here and grab asylum that's a lot of uh reduced effective curses and chaos resistance as well as the mastery giving you um cb immune um <laughs> hello um other than that uh there is like just filling out the life node here and stuff my tree ended up being around like level 97 saving these two points here by pathing here instead would put the tree at exactly 95 which is very convenient but yeah that's the passive tree um if you have if you guys have any questions let me know uh next we'll go on to uh the gyms so the gyms how the build works basically um Flame Blast and Vol Flame Blast for single target. Um, and then I'm using Fire Burst for clear. So we have a double six link set up in the staff, uh, which I you just use Hysterias for Fire Burst, right? Um, this is the second staff, the second six link staff that I've crafted for this build. Um, it's not like insanely good, but it's good enough for now. Crafting it was like two and a half X alts. Basically all I did I hit it with hysteria. I hit nothing. So all I did was keep suffixes because I only had one hysteria. Uh, so I metamodded uh, keep suffix, which is 2x. And I threw a veiled chaos orb on it. And then I prayed. The veiled chaos orb unveiled a 48% 40, fire dot multi. I think it's between. Yeah, it's between 44 and 48%. So we got the. 48% max uh, fire dot multi unveil and then I just craft I bench crafted on uh, the highest uh, tier of increased fire damage so it's okay there's definitely a lot better shit you could get with this I mean like uh, staves are insane you can roll like plus three to fire gems on it uh, you can roll like in an absolutely nutty world you could hit a plus three and then plus two to fire skills um, so you could get plus five stave uh, staff rather um, yeah, there's tons of really, really good stuff. And then there's, uh, for like suffixes, there's like burning damage and again, fire damage and all sorts of stuff. There's, there's tons of damage you could get on this staff. Uh, so this is not like crazy by any means, but it's, uh, definitely really solid for now. Um, the staff I was using before this was actually a war staff. I was just using it cause I just dropped a six link staff and I was like, well, I'll just throw the first hysteria I get on this one and we'll see what, how it goes. Um, and I'm pretty sure war staves cannot uh roll caster mods uh like natively so that one just had like a bunch of useless stats and then i crafted on the exact same fire damage roll so the difference is that this one just gets like almost 50 percent fire dot multi and that's the upgrade so it's very nice so what links am i running um and again you you do need everything to be linked it's not like a death soth uh per se where you don't need things to be linked for fire burst for whatever reason ask ggg not me stuff has to be linked in order to sub like to support it um to my knowledge um 
So yeah, uh, burning damage support, ignite prolift, unbound ailments, swift affliction, immolate, and cruelty. Um, very, very strong combo. Um, I think I'm running the exact same thing um, in my flame blast. Ignite prolift, unbound ailments, cruelty, burning damage, and swift affliction. Yep, running the exact same thing in both. Very strong, honestly. Um, going on to the gloves, uh, Flame Dash, Wave of Conviction, and Flame Surge connected to Arcanist brand. Basically how this works is while you're bossing, you just throw this up, and then it will just keep spamming Wave of Conviction and Flame Surge on the boss. This is basically mandatory with the current way that Flame Surge works. Um, if you're like, you need to use Arcanist brand for Flame Surge, else you're not gonna have any uptime on it. Like you already have to worry about like dodging mechanics and then like, you know, you have your movement abilities and then you have when to actually like not DPS the boss as well. So you don't have time to spam Flame Surge, which is an AOE that's like literally the size of my witch's feet right here. Um, it's just not feasible. So you just like throw, you throw an Arcanist brand out like every four seconds and that's just part of the rotation. Um, moving on, the boots are where we have our auras, or at least most of them. We're running Determination. I have a level 2 Enlightened that I would like to get to level 3, but um, Determination with Malevolence and a Defiance Banner. And then in the helmet, currently I'm running Phase Run. I was using Smoke Mine. I'm kind of testing out everything here. Um, in the endgame setup, there's no way you'd be able to use Phase Run. Um, but for the majority, like 99% of this character's lifespan, I've been using Smoke Mine. I just swapped Phase Run in, uh, like right at the very end of stream, we try to test stuff around to see, like maybe I could just get a bunch of movement speed and run faster to clear. Um, so that's all that is really. Other than that, we have Herald of Thunder, Molten Shell, and Castman Damage Taken. So, yes, now it's time to go over the gear. Um, so I'm using an Archdemon Crown. I mean, well, this is just a Demon Crown because it's a high enough level, uh, item level, but it doesn't really matter. Um, basically, socketed skills apply exposure on hit. Uh, this is very synergistic with our ascendancies um, because uh, here, I'll show you guys. So first lab, I went Shaper of Flames, Cruel, Mastermind of Discord, uh, Merc into Heart of Destruction, and then Uber Lab, I did Shaper Storms. So, Mastermind of Discord gives you additional minus 25% to exposure, and then you also get mana regen anytime you've, you've inflicted exposure recently. So, with Herald of Thunder, I'm running through the map, and it's just obviously, it's the thing that I'm using to proc Fire Burst, right? As you saw, it's just going off all the time, which means, one, I get mana regen all the time, and two, um that and funnily enough molten shell if anything hits me with my molten shell up they're all getting like crazy uh exposure on them um so i have a way to inflict like exposure on say like tanky rares or stuff like that without having to use the arcanist brand and waiting for the ramp up because like i'll hold left click here so i'm trying to move and then i'll hit arcanist brand and you guys can see how long it takes to come out before i can move right it's like half a second and um, like when you're clearing that feels bad and not only that but after that half second that it takes you to put it out the brand takes a second to prime and then attach to the enemy and then it takes a little bit of time after it attaches to actually cast the first time uh, so having this uh, exposure for free um, the the mana regen is very very nice but it's also just the uh, getting the exposure on like rares and stuff as I run through the map without having to mess around with Arcanist brand uh, feels very good for quality of life. So that's why I'm using the helmet. Uh, as far as the crafts go, it's tier one life. It's got a little bit of mana. It's got cold, it's got chaos. And right now I have a flat lightning roll on there and eventually I would like to get that to a hybrid chaos uh, elemental roll. In the chest piece, uh, this is just uh, whatever, holy chain mail. Uh, chest piece from the div card. Uh, I just hit it a few times. I hit plus armor. Um, I'm pretty sure this is some amount of life. No, I essence the life on. So, uh, life, armor, two double, two decent res rolls, and then I uh, benchcrafted on max life is ES. It's like insanely strong uh, benchcraft. Onto the belt. Um, Stygian Vice, I think it, some of the, some of these pieces I was using on the Chieftain and I just threw on this character since they're a similar archetype. 
Um, but it's just, uh, oops. It's just uh, tier two life, a little bit of chaos res with hybrid chaos roll. So that's, you know, 30% chaos res on a uh, Stygian, which is nice. And then I'm using a hypnotic uh, abyssal jewel, which gives me phasing on kill, um, which is why I'm not using a quartz flask right now. Uh, gives me phasing on kill, has life, and actually has a really nice uh, implicit on there that I also hit from harvest with reduced effective shock. So even though I don't currently have the uh, bench craft for reduced effective shock and chill, um, I'm 75% reduced effect shock. So most things uh, don't shock me at all. And really, really strong shocks only shock me for like two to three percent. So pretty chill. Um, moving on to the boots. Uh, these boots are pretty nice. Now they are tier two life. However, they have a ton of resist. Um, I could actually get an additional 4% resist from the implicit there, 2% fire and 2% lightning, but I just don't have blessed orbs. Uh, I have not been dropping a lot of them this league. Uh, but basically I'm running 72, 80, 82% uh, resist total right now in the boots, which is very nice. Uh, they also happen to roll increased armor, which is always cool. And then onslaught craft with the open prefix. So very nice. If you're wondering why I'm using the Onslaught Flask when I have Onslaught on Boots, it's simply because these are, this is the only flask I have right now that has CB Immune on it, and I'm out of Alteration Orbs. So this is my CB Immune Flask. Uh, onto the gloves. These are the gloves I was using on my uh, Chieftain. Just completely copied over. Uh, like I said, this build really needs deck, so that's great. It has really good fire and chaos res, and then benchcrafted on life. What I'm working on right now in terms of uh, like backups I have a second pair of apothecaries gloves that I'm crafting until they become like a decent enough replacement. And then I'm going to hit this with reforge more likely. And if you don't know what that does, it basically makes it like way more likely to hit the mods you already have on the gloves. That includes a bench craft, right? So it, it'll be really likely to roll all the mods I have, but then just have life as um like a static mod that's not bench crafted on and then that gives me the ability to craft something else onto the gloves um like you know the uh reduce effective shock and chill or something like that right um onto the ring uh, again a ring you've seen return multiple times i just have a few like different curse curse on hit rings that get cycled between different characters based on what curse i need uh this one's nothing special this is definitely the worst one that i have uh, but yeah, flam on hit, a little bit of life, a little bit of strength, a little bit of int, and then I have uh, channeling skill Elrion craft on there uh, to help a little bit with uh, mana sustain with flame blast. And then the other two stone ring, uh, very, very nice ring. This has a ton of resist. It's carrying me super hard. I mean, look at that. It's 14% from the implicit. You could get, uh, you could get an additional 4% there, 2% uh, cold and 2% lightning um, being 4% total. Uh, but 14% cold and lightning, 27% fire, 30% cold again, 16% lightning and chaos as a um, unveil mod, and then just craft it on life. This has so much res on it. It's very nice. Uh, amulet. This is just one of my um, fire leech amulets. I've got like five of them now, funnily enough. Um, so this was the GG one that I kind of crafted up on uh, my VD slinger. I threw on this character. Um, because I really needed the decks. Uh, yeah, really, really, really good amulet. Um, if you're wondering why I want fire leech, uh, basically it's kind of the same concept as why leech is so good on spell slinger VD. Um, if you don't know why, uh, leech is so good on spell slinger VD, it's kind of like pseudo over leech. So obviously life blast and leech stop as soon as you hit max life right so it doesn't matter how much uh leech you have queued up to heal you um akin to like when you pop a life flask or mana flask you can see uh like on your life bar like where it'll heal to before it stops it doesn't matter how much of that you have as soon as you hit max life it'll stop healing you right but the thing that makes um Le leech so good on like spell slinger vd is because you have so many balls around hitting things all the time uh that like it's effectively like pseudo over leech because anytime you get hit the balls are already just hitting things like non-stop so as soon as you get hit you're just instantly leeching back up you don't have to actually go out of your way and hit something for it to happen the balls are just constantly like 
permanently hitting things, right? Same concept with this build. Running through the map, Herald of Thunder constantly hitting stuff. Um, Fire Burst obviously hitting every one second. Uh, Vol, Vol Flame Blast, uh, Flame Blast. You know, there's like so many instances of damage procking. The Arcanist Brand hitting with the Flame Surge, which does hit quite hard as well. Um, as well as putting the burning ground on the thing and you know wave of conviction like there's a ton of stuff going on even if you're not hitting anything just the herald of thunder and the fire burst constantly proccing on stuff just instantly heals you running through the map it's very nice which is why um i want the es leech from the elemental mastery as well that way i can have i get the uh the life and the es when blocking um attacks and spells respectively and then also pairing that with ES Leech and Life Leech uh, should feel very, very comfortable. Um, and then the uh, another thing that makes the amulet really good is they increase uh, life recovery rate, which basically we get to leech faster, which is nice. Um, but yeah, uh, super, super good amulet. Um, and that's why I'm running leech on the build. And for like single target on bosses and stuff, Obviously, like fire burst, everything I said still applies, but you're going to be hitting the boss with, you know, 10 stack flame blasts, which hit like a fucking truck. Even though it is an ailment I'm hitting them with, um, the just the base damage on flame blast is insane. So that's just a lot of leech. It's very nice, right? Um, lastly, I already kind of went over the staff here, so I'm not going to go over it again. But yeah, that's uh, that's the build. So basically the way it plays um is you kind of just run around the very beginning of the map i do this and then you're good to go and you just kind of like walk through the map and everything dies and then once you get to the boss or you get to like a super tanky rare or like an essence monster you pop vol flame blast if you want throw on a arcanist brand and yeah that's pretty much everything uh it's for for actual like bossing though you're gonna have to use act like playing flame blast a lot more um because you're only going to get souls for vol flame blast every once in a while though it's very cool that vol flame blast has a very very short cooldown and a very very low threshold of souls required to cast it so you're gonna have excuse me you're gonna have vol flame blast up uh during a, a real like end game boss fight way more often than you would like vol detonate dead um so it will be available much more often um in terms of defenses of the build, uh, our auras, we are running, like I said before, Determination, uh, Malevolence, Defiance Banner, and then Herald of Thunder. Herald of Thunder obviously is automating the Fire Burst for us, uh, but defensively we have Determination and Defiance Banner, also running um, Vol Molten Shell with Molten Shell. Um, the build is actually quite tanky. Right now, as you can see, I'm running 52% block, 47% spell block. Those are very respectable numbers. Um, also worth noting that I do have a Rumi's um, that I'm not currently using simply because I'm not freeze immune yet. Um, that will happen like first thing tomorrow since I'm already pushing like high yellow maps on this character. Um, so tomorrow we'll go and capture uh, Latanius, I believe, um, from Relic Chambers, get our freeze immune. Once I have that, I can start running Rumi's, which is an additional, I will divine this uh, up to 12. So 12 and six, which will put our spell with Rumi's up. We'll put our spell block at 53 and our attack block at a very respectable 64. Um, so we have tons of defensive layers on the build. Obviously again, we're running determination, which gives a ton of armor. We're running defiance banner, which um, for general mapping is uh, very good defensively giving the armor and then the uh, reduced crit chance and whatnot and then for bossing Everything that I said still applies, but you can then place the banner for the taunt which just like straight decreases the damage enemies deal by 15% um, So it's like almost having fortify for a few seconds uh, very close 15 as opposed to 20% uh, baseline But it's like a pseudo fortify for a few seconds. So you pop it whenever there's a lot of damage coming in if you fuck up in a serious beam, uh, gets aimed at you and uh, you don't want to just like rely on your block to save you, throw down the defiance banner, you know, bam, uh, you'll just be able to tank the serious beam and you'll be fine. 
Uh, so yeah, we have the Defiance Banner, we have the Determination, we have the Molten Shell with Vol Molten Shell. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we also have the Block Chance, and then again on the tree, we have our Life and ES on Block, uh, which is very cool. Um, which again synergizes with our Power Charge on Block, uh, which gives us higher crit chance, so we can proc Ellie Overload more easily. Now, if you're wondering how Ellie Overload works with this build, word of warning. Um, for whatever reason, uh, I don't know why it works this way. It's stupid that it works this way, but the way GGG has changed Ellie Overload is so everything um, has their own Ellie Overload now. One thing to note, first and foremost, Fire Burst can proc Ellie Overload. This is confirmed by GGG. It just doesn't show up in like the tooltips because there's no tooltip for it, like on your bar. Obviously, there's no Fire Burst here. Um, but it can proc Ellie Overload and it does get the damage from it. Um, you just can't see it, but it is happening. Um, but second off, Vol Flame Blast and Flame Blast have different instances of Ellie Overload. It's stupid that it works this way. I don't know why it works this way. I hope in the future it no longer works this way, but for this patch it does. So what that usually leads to is you'll pop your Vol Flame Blast on the boss and Vol Flame Blast goes do 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 do. You know, it hits like a ton. Um, so, you know, like Vol Flame Blast, usually by the, the time you get to the very last explosion, you will have Ellie Overload up and it'll hit and it'll feel very nice and it's very cool. But for normal Flame Blast, typically what you're going to find yourself doing um, for bosses, like an endgame boss, if you're fighting Sirius or Maven or Elder or something like that, what you're going to want to do is do this a few times. Just literally right click and let go. You just got to do it a few times and proc the Ellie Overload and then do your cast. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds because Ellie Overload, it only takes a few casts usually, and Ellie Overload uh, does last for eight seconds. So you're gonna be able to get uh, two Ignites, two full Flame Blasts um, per Ellie Overload. Uh, so basically, end game, uh, like end game boss fights, what you're kind of looking at is when everything else is down and you're just doing filler, it's gonna be like this. wait and then pop 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 that's kind of how the rotation would work and then obviously you'd be putting arcanist brands up um every time you ignite so after you get the flame blast off you put arcanist brand up or, and then yeah you don't want to put it up um and actually the timing works out really well because the my current um my current Ignite uptime is like 5.1 seconds and Arcanist Bran uh, stays attached for 3.6 seconds. So basically by the time you actually cast Arcanist Bran, it gets on the mob and it starts hitting them. Um, that amount of time of the Ignite has uh, delayed. So they like pretty much run out at the exact same time. It actually lines up very cleanly. Uh, make sure you're not throwing Arcanist Bran on top of the boss before uh, before you ignite them because it will run out too soon um, and you'll lose damage because of it. The same goes for Vol Flame Blast. Uh, the exception being with Vol Flame Blast, since you don't have to channel it the whole time, you can pop Vol Flame Blast and then like right before the last stage hits, you can hit Arcanist Brand and save a little bit of time there. But don't like throw Arcanist Brand up, then hit Vol Flame Blast um, because by the time the last ignite hits, the Arcanist Brand will already have fallen off. Uh, so, yeah. Um... I think I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, I know this is a long one, but there's a lot to explain, a lot to go through. I'm excited to push the character further. Uh, the character seems to have a lot of potential. It's quite fun to play. Um, it's uh, honestly, it's really unique. Um, I do wanna say one thing. If you wanted to follow along with this build and you don't yet have Essence of Hysteria for Fire Burst, don't worry. You can do one of two things. Um, you can just throw a like Armageddon brand in a four link and like not use a staff. If you want to use a staff, feel free, but you can use like a scepter and a shield um, and just use like armor brand in a four link uh, for clear and then use flame blast and ball flame blast exactly how I described for single target and tanky bosses or tanky rares. Or um, you can just go pure flame blast because crazily enough, with Heart of Destruction, the massive AoE you get from that, as well as the AoE from uh, 
that you just get for free from explosive impact because i'm only taking it for damage not aoe right the the radius on ignite is absolutely ridiculous so like when i go into the beginning of a map and i right click just this to proc my herald of thunder like um if i'm like right clicking the map device like this right everything in about this big of a radius gets ignited like the the radius on is absolutely huge so um there's actually not that big of a difference like obviously just being able to run in a straight line and everything dies around you is like feels amazing and it's very fast but like literally you could just map like this and you will be like igniting entire like over half a screen like i cannot state enough like how ridiculously big the ignites are i don't really want to go through it and show you guys because this video is already ridiculously long um again there will be chapters down below uh but yeah i hope i hope this was cool for you guys i hope you um enjoyed this or maybe that this is an interesting build because this is yeah this is unique this is a brainchild uh of mine um i didn't really play fire burst at all back in i think ritual when it was like mega op just I'm sure you guys know by now, I kind of have an adversity towards like mega meta stuff. Um, I don't like playing stuff if everybody is doing it. I wish I didn't have that fault, but I guess it's just a little hipster in me. But um, it, yeah, mixing flame blast, something I've been itching to actually play for a while with fire burst, something I've been itching to play for a while and really test out if it's good. Sorry if you hear my cat, she's playing right now with the spring. Um, yeah putting them together it seems to be a really strong combo right now uh staves are not a meme anymore they seem to be quite strong actually um so yeah i think that's everything guys uh, appreciate it if you made it through the entire video definitely let me know um if you like the content you like the ideas whatever feel free to give me a thumbs up it really does help the channel a lot um if you didn't like it feel free to thumbs down and tell me what i can do better um other people can't see them anymore but i still can see them um <laughs> so the message will come across and then uh yeah if you like if you like the content in general or whatever feel free to to sub because stuff gets uploaded uh daily so yeah uh thanks a bunch guys for watching uh i'll see you in the next one i'm gonna go get some sleep peace